Hi folks, take a look at this aluminum pulley. Who would have thought this may be the key to helping understand proper machine maintenance and adjusting things like angular contact bearings and gibs on a machine? Let's make it. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. So if you're here for the entertainment, just stick around. But if you're here to make yourself a better machinist, hit pause and take a look at this part and you tell me how you would make it. I'll be honest, I really fretted over it for a while. And I know we joke about me not liking lathes, but I really thought this is a great time to get back on the lathe. And then I started thinking about, well, wait a minute here, how am I going to hold it or in the backside? And I've got a couple of these holes in here. And I thought, well, I wasn't sure. And then I realized, I didn't really have a good piece of round bar on hand, and that meant it definitely made more sense for me to do it on the mill. The lathe will make an appearance though. So cutting up a piece of material, we love the DeWalt DW872 card here. It's been an awesome saw for the shop because it's really fast and the part stays cold when you're done cutting. And we are biased because one of our Saunders Machine Works products these days is a aftermarket plate that really makes the saw more versatile, reliable, and accurate and safe. We are using the super glue trick. It is the perfect example, giving us full access to the part profile. Our part is 0.75 inches thick and I've got a piece of three quarter inch material and that works out great here. So card here, if you didn't watch last week's Wednesday widget, but this super glue trick when combined with the painter's tape is an absolutely amazing technique to work hold. Fast, reliable, and secure. I was using the cheap Gorilla Glue. Um, I hadn't realized Ed's trick on using the Loctite 8451, I think. And this works totally fine. The big difference is that it takes longer to set up. So when I put the clamp on, it's really easy to twist your part a little. And I actually wanted to keep the part relatively square because of the nature of how I was gonna set, find my zero and I didn't have a lot of extra stock. Quick face with the Superfly. We actually did have a little bit of extra Z height to this stock, so that was nice to let us clean this part up. And seeing the Tormach 770 with super glue, with this Lake Short End Mill at 10,000 RPMs and 2,000 seven inch feed per tooth, which is about 60 inches a minute. And look at the chip coming off it. It's just awesome. It just makes me happy. It's just so cool. And ironically, the point of this video is doing things like adjusting your angular contact bearings, adjusting your gives, and that's really important for any machine tool, or at least any dovetail gibbs machine tool, to making sure you're getting the most out of it for service finishes and for tool life and just general longevity. We're gonna to want to press a pin in. So we're going to first drill it out. I keep a 3 8 inch drill set up, so we'll use that. So we're coming in at 225 surface speed feet per minute. That's about 70 meters a minute. And feeding at 2,000 per rev. And then we're using a bore to open that up. I am leaving about a thou and a half which we'll walk out here in a second, just to make sure we get a good interference press fit. The other really good trick when you're gonna press a pin in is we're gonna use 2D contour. Under geometry, I picked the top edge, but under passes, I dropped it down one eighth of an inch and we're leaving negative radial stock to leave. What that's going to do is it's gonna cut a wider clearance groove one eighth of an inch down won't really compromise any of the press fit work holding ability, especially for what we're doing. And it lets you start the pin in and keep it straight, which is such a nice thing to do. You could accomplish the same thing with a slightly oversized reamer if you had one, but we've got a CNC mill, so interpolating is easy. Couple of quick spots and drills.
and then finally a chamfer. So we left a little bit of uh, flashing at the bottom, and the first time I actually ran this, I didn't go as deep as I wanted, so we've got a second run, a card here, by the way, to the NYC CNC page, where you can download this Fusion 360 CAD and CAM. We're gonna open that bore up to get a better press fit, and we're gonna open that contour up a little bit deeper to make it easier for us to, uh, to get that pin in, like I mentioned. And then finally, we're gonna do a 2D contour, just a hair lower, which will help clean up that flashing. Uh, last week when, when Ed and I were filming the super glue video, we kind of took it easy. This time I thought, you know what, let's have some fun. I should be able to hit this part off with a dead blow hammer with the full swing pretty easy, and I couldn't. We finally grabbed an uh, extended piece of plastic, I think this was nylon, which just let me swing the hammer harder outside the machine. And I wish I had captured a second camera angle because I tell you, I am slamming on this hammer. And it's just a testament to how amazing it is. And then the tape means you don't have to deal with getting the super glue off your part. And now how do we press that pin in? Well, if you've got a vise, you've got to press. We put a plate in front of the pin so that we're not pressing on a focused point. And you'd be amazed, six inch vices have thousands upon thousands, maybe even 10,000 pounds of clamping pressure. And we're pushing on this vise, but it works. Now we'll head over to the Slant Pro. Running at 650 surface feet on surface speed, cutting at four thou per rev. It wouldn't be an NYC CNC video if there wasn't some birds nesting on the lathe. And joking aside, I did, didn't want it here, but I would actually love some legitimate help. With these grooving tools, I can't say I really understand or paid attention to chip breaking actions, but I'm curious, is it a speeds and feeds thing or should I get different geometry? We're using an inexpensive import insert here. I've had much better cutting and luck with the Sandvik grooving tool, but that's a rounded radius tool. So here we're again, just using our import, but I would appreciate some help. Getting your grooving cam toolpath dialed in can be a little tricky. Great time to use templates so that we, when you get something you like, you can save it. In this case, I want to do roughing pecs. And then when I'm done, I want to come through with finish passes to give that final cleanup. We also had some chatter here, and I think that could be solved by reducing the surface speed. I was disappointed because I like to make nice parts and good parts and free of chatter, but it won't actually affect or cause a problem for what we're doing here. And I didn't want to redo it because when we were done, I just set this up real, real quick and dirty. Pretty awesome. We were within 3 thou for a quick caliper check. But 3 thou is pretty awesome when, again, you just stuck it in there, pressed it onto a half-inch dowel pin, and hit go on the machine. Quick drill, I'm opening up that hole. I didn't have that drill set up on the 770, so a lot of times I'll just drill with a drill that we keep in our sort of tool library and then chase it later by hand. It's pretty quick, and I had to come over here anyways to throw the tap in. And so that tapped hole will hold a washer that'll keep our string in place. Uh, and we started out with fishing wire. Uh, we've been working for days now on filming this Tormach maintenance video, so more to come on it. Uh, we've moved away from fishing wire, but you'll see more of that in the maintenance video. It'll take us a few weeks to get that video done, but we'll have a card here when we do finally publish it. And I am really excited because it's something that is bigger than just Tormach. It ties into the Richard King scraping classes, which are also talk about machine rebuilding and how machine tools are put together. And some pretty cool things that I think anybody, whether it's a compound or cross slide on an older lathe or a modern CNC machine that uses dovetailed Gibbs, really helpful stuff to understand. Does anybody know what the pulley's for? So it's a two inch diameter, which means it's a one inch radius. So we will be using this in conjunction with a fish scale style torque tool to do some scientific measurements on our angular contact bearing preload, as well as on setting our gib. Folks, hope you learned, hope you enjoyed something. Take care, see you next Wednesday. <laughs>